Hello, welcome to the Scout Model Club, and on this week's show... Hello, welcome to the Scale Model Club. Um, we're now building the F14D Super Tomcat in 170 second scale. So, to start off, the first thing the instructions ask us to do is to drill some holes. Go. Oh. I can cut this off the sprue, this is the main fuselage, the bottom half, and we'll drill some little holes in it. Hope everybody's alright. Still in lockdown. Yippee. So I'm just going to clean off the bits with a knife, a bit of a sand, just to tidy up the edges. And the drill bit I'm going to use for this is a really small drill bit. I think it's just under a millimetre. I can't remember. I think it's either 0.5 or... Uh, but it's from a tiny little set, a tiny little drill bit set that I bought from the range. And I'm going to use uh, a Humbrol's... Uh, it's called a needle vise. You unscrew the end, pop your drill bit in, screw the end back up. And what you want to do with these models is it's easy to find because you, the instructions tell you where there's be a little indent where it is. Put the drill bit on it, a little tiny bit of force, not too much, and then just turn the, the drill, letting the bit do the work, and then back through the other way just to clean up the hole. All done. Well worth getting one of these um, needle vices. Get them in all good hobby stores. Um, the bottom piece is, is unattached, so you sort of put that in the palm of your hand, like that is, and that holds it still, and then you just turn the, the centre. So that's the holes done. And I think there's some holes to be... Uh, the uh, air intakes, I like the air intakes, and they are um, the air intakes. I think it's actually the fuel tanks that go on to them. But I don't need the fuel intakes yet, so I'm not going to take them off, I'm just going to drill the holes. Mainly, this episode is just the cockpit, as there's quite a few bits that go together, and there's quite a lot, um, and it's just the cockpit that I've done before I put the fuselage and stuff is uh, going to be next week's show. It's quite a big model for 172. <laughs> so that's the holes drilled. If you push too hard on these, you're more than likely going to break the drill bit uh, or the plastic. So, just a little bit of pressure to keep the nib in contact, the bit in contact with the plastic, and just turn it, let the drill bit itself do the work for you. Clear out the uh, drill bit. Do the last hole. Thanks everybody for watching all the other videos I've done. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Make sure you tell your friends and like and subscribe to this one, especially if you like the F14s. See, that's the piece that's not attached. So you hold it in the palm of your hand. That stays still, and then you can just turn the body of the needle vise. But it's it's a brilliant little tool. I use it quite a lot. Right, so here we go then. We'll start off with the seats. 
See, it's come in three different parts. The two sides. Well, actually, four different parts. You get the two sides and the middle and then the bits on the top it's a bit of a shame i think next time if i do one i'm going to see if i can find a nice uh, photo etch kit because i didn't get the ejector handles that are stripy handles that they put above their heads there's also no pilots in this kit either i'm doing the kit with the canopy closed um because i like the look of the aircraft as is when it's closed not 100% sure if I'm going to do the wheels up or down at the moment um, I know down's good because it can just sit on the shelf but I, I just I like the aircraft with the wheels up I just like the way it looks but I just I'm not sure how to mount it because I don't have a stand or anything but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it Is that the wrong way round No, I think the easiest way to do one of these is to take the two halves, stick them together, oh, stick them together and then to glue the seat into the bottom of them because they snap together like that. Yeah, like that. Perfect. So what we'll do is we'll uh, run some glue around that. Might even leave it all in one piece and just run around the glue, let the glue run into the gaps. The cockpit is always quite a lot of work. It's always the bit, the front of the aircraft that's a bit sort of, you have to build it and paint it all at the same sort of time. And then you have to find ways of masking it up because you can't get the main body and everything masked up on it. Get the paint all over it. That's mainly why I've put the, um, canopy closed on it because then you don't really have to mask you have to have to muck about masking it all up uh, the seats aren't bad um, but as I said they're not brilliant I would have liked to have the rings for the ejector pull on the top I, have, I didn't fit them I should have made my own oh, excuse me I really should have made my own. But I didn't. The kit is made out of the box and everything you get from the box. Brilliant, so that's the two seats done. I think the next job is to glue those into the cockpit. The co also, uh, the other thing I might look for is actually a co uh, a photo etch stuff for the cockpit because the cockpit doesn't the decal sheet doesn't come with any cockpit stickers and the detail in the cockpit isn't brilliant and it's a little bit difficult to paint i found it a little bit difficult to paint let's do the second seat navigators throne You also only get the decals for one aircraft in the kit. So um, I did consider getting some Maverick and Goose stickers uh, decals for it, but this one comes with teeth on the front. I love teeth on the front of an aircraft. So we're going to do this one as the Grim Reaper. Um, and then I might do another one. Well, nearer the when the film comes and the new new Top Gun film comes out that we're all really looking forward to. When that comes out, I think I might do a, a couple of the Top Gun models. I think Airfix are releasing a range of new ones. Anyway, back to the Super Tomcat. I'm not worried, I really should find out what makes it a Super Tomcat and not just a normal Tomcat. Lovely, two seats. Now we just need some uh, some controls and some joysticks, which will all be really small.
having a quick look through the box, see if we can find all the uh, the next pieces for the next bit. Because uh, the, 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 the sprues are set out really strangely. There's all kinds of different bits on all kind, all four sprues. I need like a little sprue holder. So we have the two seats, uh, and what I've done is I've put them on blue tack as usual. Put the cocktail stick in the end, and put them on a peg. And now this is uh, me throwing paint everywhere. Excellent. Um, this is NATO black. It's a new NATO black because I've got a nice new order of paints in. Um, thin down in the standard manner. If you just put the uh, Tamiya thinner in the top up to the line that naturally, you get a natural line where you take the lid off a brand new bottle. It creates a little line on the inside. Basically, you fill it up. It's almost 50-50 with thinners. Stick it in the airbrush or throw it all over the table. Um, and I'm going to paint everything this colour. So you uh, you create a shadow coat and also the um, seats are black anyway. So there we go. A few issues with the airbrush there, which you get. Because I cleaned out the airbrush and I left it sat on the side for too long. It wasn't properly cleaned out. Uh, I'm doing this whole sprue black because these are the two headrests that I was just going to put on afterwards. So the two seats, some two headrests, I'm going to do in this NATO black. Sure, there was something else I did in NATO Black, but I can't remember what it was. Um, but the actual, um, I, I was going to do the cockpit. I was going to do the whole cockpit NATO Black, and then I thought, no, I didn't. I sort of wish I did because I think it would have given a nice effect, but I didn't. So the next colour, uh, the next time I, d I did the bottom half of the cockpit itself, which the seats glue into. I did that in a nice grey colour. Or light ghost, light ghost grey after we've cleaned this black out. Yeah, oh no, it's the yeah, ghost grey and it's a uh, it's it doubles strangely enough it doubles up as Vallejo's primer. Um, it's the same colour, exactly the same colour. It actually says on the bottle ghost grey stroke primer. So I primed it in the grey colour. Uh, I think if I'd have done it black as well, which I should have done, you'd have got a nice little sort of shadowy effect, but you don't see much of it, to be fair, because it's inside the uh, fuselage. So that's grey. Next thing, I took some matte black and filled in some of the little bits that we're going to be glued in the joysticks and bits and pieces like that. So let's speed this up. Now we're also going to paint the seats in an olive green because that's what colour they should be. And the seat belts I did in a khaki colour. And I think they're actually supposed to be grey, but the khaki stands out a little bit. But you're not going to see many of them. I like the khaki colour. Makes it look like a proper seat belt. So now I've got some black. Now it, it's not. It's matte black. Fro uh, no, just a matte black acrylic paint. Artist paint. Nothing special. Thought I'd give it a go. Um, and I'm just painting the control panels on each side of the cockpit. Um, like I said, there's no decals for these so literally you've got to paint them black and then paint all the little knobs and bits white which I found very difficult it would have been nicer just to if I'd got myself a nice PE set I could have sanded them off and stuck on a nice set and they'd have looked really nice but you don't see too much because like I said I'm going to have the cockpit closed just 
Just like if I've got no pilots, that's going to look really silly with the wheels up, isn't it? Never mind, we'll put the wheels down then. So I think that's the seats and the headrest on the cockpit. Now I'm going to give the whole the seats uh, a wash. That's the dark wash for green because I did them in the olive green. So tiny bit on the paintbrush, cover them with a bit of a wash. Makes them look a bit grubby and a bit dirty. Do both the seats and the seat belts. Makes the seat belt stand out a little bit. So you give them a few minutes to dry. So give them a few minutes to dry and then just wipe off the excess with a cotton bud. And it just leaves you dirt in all the dirty places. Makes them look like a proper seat. So now the cockpit is done black and grey and what I've got is a cocktail stick because that's what I find the finest way. I haven't got like a really fine paintbrush. Dip it in the white and then just touch it on some of the little buttons so you can see some of the buttons that's after it's had a I gave it a bit of a dry brushing in white but it didn't come out as nicely as I wanted it was clear as I wanted it so then I went over it with the toothpick and some standard white acrylic paint that's also just an artist acrylic paint nothing special The only thing I haven't worked out is how to thin those down nice enough to go through the airbrush. The airbrush just doesn't like them, so I gave up. Right, so that's the cockpit weathered, the seats weathered. Just gonna now the dashboard, which is what's in there. I going to do the same with the cocktail stick and I've also painted the radar displays in a chrome silver so they're shiny let that go off and then over the top of that I'll put some clear green Tamiya do a clear green so what it looks like is a green radar and it's quite a nice effect and I made all that effort to make that look nice and put it into the cockpit and then I don't think you can see any of it but anyway, so let's stick the seats in and we'll get the cockpit stuck in and we'll get all the bits stuck into the cockpit and then we'll get the tip put into the fuselage. Uh, I think we've got the two seats cockpit um, joysticks, that kind of thing, and also you glue the under the under carriage bay to the bottom of it because it's going to be underneath it in the fuselage. So these are these really small bits. Strange, I didn't drop any of these this time. I'll make a change. Usually, you, usually you cut them off the sprue and it disappears off into the carpet. In with the tweezers. So there we have it. Dash. I keep saying dashboard. I don't actually know what it is. Cockpit controls. Um, so yeah, these are the two cockpit controls. We'll put those in and then we'll stick the ejector seats, supposedly seats, um, on the back of the uh, seats just before we, uh, as the final touch. The cockpits were a little awkward to get in, it wasn't quite clear where they sat properly and they didn't really fit in the hole but a little bit of mucking about that got done okay and I was quite pleased actually to be surprised I was quite pleased with the result you 
so these must be these are really tiny these were so a bit of glue on the top but they fitted absolutely spot on drop them in a hole and they stuck dosh no need for any kind of mucking about just about it painted weathered controls done the two seats are in weathered a few little bits of touch up here and there because I'm not 100% sure what you do and don't see so I painted everything all the edges black uh, then I painted the inside of the nose of the aircraft grey because I wasn't sure how much you could see inside there not quite sure what color it should be but grey seemed the right color so I painted the inside of that grey and stuck, like I said, like you see, the undercarriage is stuck to the bottom of it and then I stuck the whole thing in the fuselage and we stuck the two sides of the fuselage together. I held it together with a bit of tape in the end because it wasn't a brilliant fit, but it wasn't bad. But, uh, and thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and come back next week and we will fit that to the rest of the fuselage but I'm very pleased with that nice